Okay, so when we talk about stiff knee, what exactly do we mean? Any knee which has an uh, arc of motion of less than 50 degrees is classified as a stiff knee. But what you need to understand is a stiff knee, there are different degrees of stiffness and an ankylose knee and a stiff knee are two different things completely. What are the causes? Previous infection, previous surgery, rheumatoid, ankylosing, hypertrophic osteoarthritis with bony blocks causing the stiffness, hemophilia, and sometimes you have the happy situation where pre-op the patient seems to be very stiff, but uh, when you give anesthesia, the knee opens up and makes your surgery much easier. So what are the pathological components of a stiff knee? You have the bone, which can be ankylosed, or there can be large bone blocks. And then you have the soft tissues, which can start from the level of the skin, adhesions, which could be intra-articular or extra-articular, the capsule, ligaments, and tendons. And it's important to understand what the components are during the surgery, because then these can be addressed. So when you evaluate, obviously the first thing you'll see is the range and you need to see is it stiff in extension or is it stiff in flexion because your approach will depend on that. Then you look for any scars, contractures, you look at the mobility of the patella that will help you decide how much you need to mobilize, your angular deformities because that again will affect your releases then look at the circulation, and if the circulation is compromised, then better don't touch the knee at all. Look at the sensory motor function, and last but definitely not the least, look at the patient desire and motivation. And based on this, you first thing you need to decide is, should I be doing a surgery at all on this patient? If you have an unmotivated patient, and you do the surgery. The last thing you want is six months down the line, the patient is still in bed, the contractures have recurred because the patient just doesn't have the motivation to do the physiotherapy. And, and last point, record the findings because these uh, cases can go south and you need to have everything on record. So now let's look at the plan when the knee is uh, stiff inflection. The video is not playing. Uh, anyway, it's okay. Uh, so, in when the knee is stiff inflection, usually your standard approach uh, works. You may need to do a rectal snip. You don't really need to do a tibial tubercle osteotomy. First thing you do is take a plus distal femur cut. These require extensive posterior release, so you identify the posterior capsule, you incise it, then you run your cautery along the posterior surface of the tibia, run your curved periosteum or osteotome along the posterior surface of the femur. Don't undersize the femur. So if you're between sizes, go for the higher size, and in rheumatoid, uh, you can accept a 10 to 15 degree uh, flexion deformity, and this will stretch out over time with uh, 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 physiotherapy and splinting. Now, when you're dealing with a knee which is stiff in extension, that's a much more difficult uh, situation you, again, you mostly can approach them with a rectus snip alone. A tibial tubercle osteotomy is a good option if there's a patella baha or if the knee is ankylosed. Because what you can do then is you can translate the osteotomy proximally. Here you need to regain quadriceps length and that's what you, you do. Uh, so the approach is first you clear the quadriceps, clear all adhesions under the quadriceps and patella tendon, then move to the gutters, clear them out completely, achieve 45 degrees of knee flexion. Once you've achieved 45 degrees of knee flexion, this allows you to take your distal femoral cut. Once you've taken your distal femoral cut, you get some ro uh, working room. So then you can progress with your knee. Now, 
how do you regain quadriceps length? Because you need to regain flexion. You do multiple pie, uh, pie crusting of the uh, quadriceps and you take a slightly more generous patella cut. And you have to have a realistic aim and tell the patient this. Look, you're not going to get good flexion. You're going to get something like 70 degrees or 90 degrees at best. What about the inventory? For most of the stiff knees, your posterior stabilized primary component is good enough. All cases that you do, you have to have your valgus varus constraint, TC3 or CCK, on table. And very often you land up with a situation where you have residual mismatch, so you need to be able to convert to that implant. A hinge knee, rarely you need, usually you need a hinge knee when the knee is totally ankylosed because then you can't salvage the collateral ligaments and you need to move to a hinge. So let's just look at the key surgical steps. When you've got skin like this, the first thing you need to do is involve a plastic surgeon from the beginning. This is especially true if the knee is stiff in extension because you have a lot of risk of uh, skin problems. If now take a long incision, excising the previous incision. If there are multiple incisions, go for the lateral most incision. Release adherent skin. Very often the skin is adhered, so you need to release it. At the same time, you don't meet, need to make extensive flaps undermining the skin because then you land up with necrosis. Go for a long medial para parapatella approach, maintaining a good soft tissue sleeve. Now, when you're exposing these knees, you need to have patience. Here you can see how the quadriceps is stuck to the femur. So first thing you do is with the cautery, release the quadriceps. Take a cobs or a periosteum and run it along the uh, anterior femur all the way up the thigh, releasing it. Then come down towards the patella tendon and anterior tibia, excise all the scar tissue from that, freeing the patella tendon. Then move into the gutters and clear out the gutters. At that stage, you're ready to start mobilizing the patella. But before you do that, put a pin into the tibial tuberosity because there's a risk you will avulse the tuberosity. And now you try and mobilize the patella. You will not be able to evert the patella, so you just subluxate these patellas. And at this stage, right in the beginning, do a rectus snip. So how do you do a rectus snip? There are two ways of doing it. You can take a medial parapatella approach and then go obliquely at the proximal end of the parapatella approach, or you could go obliquely from superior patella across the tendon. It doesn't matter which way you do it. The advantage of a rectus snip, it gives you fantastic exposure, and at the same time, you, it doesn't compromise your rehab. Occasionally, you need to do a tibial tubercle osteotomy. If you are doing a tibial tubercle osteotomy, leave a, uh, make sure the osteotomy is a good chunk. Start medially with an oscillating saw, but complete the lateral end with an osteotome and then flip it. The lateral part should, the soft tissue should be maintained. Do not uh, dissect of the soft tissue, maintain your proximal bone hinge, that's very important. And close the, uh, today we close the osteotomy with fiber wire with the knots kept laterally. A quadriceps plasty, we used to do it many years ago to get length back and it's a great way to get your length back. But as you can see here, it leaves the patient with a uh, extension lag which is why we don't do it nowadays. But if you do choose to do it, suture it with nylon rather than Vicryl. And you have to protect the patient post-op. So now, how, what do you do if you've got an ankylosed knee? When your patella is ankylosed, you need to separate it with an osteotome. And you have to be a little careful. The mistake here most people make is they make the patella very thin. So you need to make sure you're keeping it thick. 
and if you are doing uh, your uh, in situ osteotomy of the tibiofemoral joint, uh, what you need to do is use your tibial jig, try and identify the joint line. If you are not sure from the bony landmarks, use a C arm, put K wires, use your tibial jig and take out a biscuit from the tibia. This gives you again some working room. Lastly, the post-op. Today in knees we don't keep a drain, but these are cases where you may want to keep a drain. Start them on CPM immediately. They need a lot of good pain relief. The ones with a flexion deformity, you need to splint, and occasionally you may need to manipulate these knees. If you've done an osteotomy or quadriceps plasty, you have to be a little slow in your active quadriceps exercises. Thank you.